uh, we specifically use the masking method of channel routing so uh, this is the, the explanation and uh, you have you have the inflow valve flow volume and you have the outflow volume so um, usually the, the flow tips uh, uh, height decrease at the blows increases as you move the downstream so you might have two different storage this part is called the the prism storage and this one the wedge storage and um, this is a way uh, you calculate the prism storage as a linear uh, related to is the uh, the, the outflow discharge and uh, whereas um, the coefficients are introduced uh, like to form the wage storage is only certain percentage of this is the inflow okay and uh, the difference between the inflow and the outflow will be uh, the, the, the to certain percentage it, it will be the, uh, the percentage the inflow and the percentage percentage the inflow minus the outflow with the certain percent and um, the, the X values uh, range from 0, uh, 0 to 0 0.5 um, and uh, usually for natural river system it is up to 0 0.3 and, uh, so how can we, we come up with a um, with given uh, uh, the, the characteristics of our, our, our uh, Muskingum equation so uh, Muskingum equation helps us to estimate the flow a certain point downstream uh, by by using this equation uh, for example this this one is uh, the, the natural uh, change in storage equation you can equate this equation with uh, the Muskingum equation uh, you can finally come up with this one so uh, these are the coefficients c1 c2 and c3 so in order to find out uh, the uh, the q at time t plus one you, you have to go with uh, c1 c2 and c3 you have to find them and you can actually get the x value uh, that, that uh, best fits your, your situation by iteration. And uh, if you find x, you can find your k. If you can find your k and x, then c1, c2 will be determined. If you have c1, c2, then you can easily determine the discharge at certain points downstream. So here is our data, uh, the time, the inflow data and outflow data. Uh, the, this particular we have. So the first step is to find the inflow minus uh, the outflow in a meter cube per second. So this is uh, in a meter cube per second, and uh, and this is equal to the inflow minus the outflow directly. Yeah. And this is uh, what you get. Then we have to calculate the mean storage. We actually say that the change in inflow, uh, the, the difference between inflow and outflow is the storage. Then um, mean storage, if you want to calculate the mean storage, uh, at the time t is equal to zero, we have a zero storage. But at time t is equal to one, we have the average of time one and time two. So this is average plus uh, this one. So divide by two. Now, um, if you have to, uh, if you have to um, get the k values in terms of days, uh, you need to introduce the mean uh, storage in in the form of a meter cube per second per day. So uh, we have uh, the delta t six hour. So if you multiply this by the ratio of the delta t six hour to the days, we will have this value in a meter cube per second per day. So you can calculate these values in the same principle. Okay. Now you can calculate this accumulated storage, accumulated uh, accumulated storage. Okay. In this case, at this time we have zero. At this time, we have the previous storage plus uh, the current storage, uh, current current mean storage. Then uh, make the other two be calculated by the same way. Now once you found this, this is your accumulated storage S. Yes. And then you have to calculate your storage in somewhere else and um, the other way uh, we can calculate the storage is by using this one so if you use uh, xi plus 1 minus x uh, q uh, to calculate uh, the, the, the other storage and uh, we'll be able to find our k as a slope of the, the relationship between the two curves so um, here is uh, the another equation which is inflow times the x value uh, plus 1 minus the inflow uh, 1 minus the x in times uh, the outflow discharge will give you the storage and then 
So I assume the x value, this is an actual river, and you can assume x value between 0 0.3 to 0 0.0 to 0 0.3, then you can assume 0 0.3. So for 0 0.3, I can calculate this, uh, this value. So this is equal to inflow, inflow times uh, the x value, which is this one, as this constant, I should fix that. And uh, plus one minus the x again, and that is a constant value and um, then this is multiplied by uh, the outflow the discharge outflow so this is what you get and uh, do the same thing for the rest this is what you find okay now uh, you have to draw the s on the x-axis and uh, this on the y-axis uh, and see what you got Insert the curve uh, so this is what you have then um, this is your curve in this uh, we have i x uh, plus one minus uh, x into q and then this we have the s yeah. and then the the optimal value of x uh, this is the x and this value depends on x so we, we only find the optimal value of x when this curve is narrow enough okay which means when the estimation as we go upward and downward meets each other when they are the same then that is our optimal x value so you can change this x value to 0 0.1 uh, to see that so this is based on 0 0.3 maybe if you decrease this from 0 0.05 so this is open no it's not good so let's increase to 0 0.125 and this is getting better, it's increased to 0 0.15 so this is where we can attain a better one so if you go to 0 0.175 it is getting open so 0 0.15 uh, is a better one so once you find this, fit this line with uh, a trend line uh, which is linear trend line and find uh, the equation on chart okay. then um, in this equation Okay. The slope of this equation will be uh, your k value. So the, the inverse of the slope of this equation, which means uh, 1 over uh, 2.3819 uh, uh, will be your k value in days. Okay. So this is how you do the masking and routing in Excel sheets.